but uh, I think it's Yorba Linda where all of this is going off. In uh, California, just maybe yeah. 30 seconds ago, they said that the uh, seismic people there predicted it with a 9-7 prediction, and it has to do with gas lines, and they're not real. Right. Right. No, <laughs> no, no link news um, posted about exactly. an hour and a half ago that – the the news there in fact I, I captured the clip but um they the, the news in California by your Belinda was coming out saying that this is all due to an explosion that took place in Ontario, Canada. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Well, that puts down that puts all the seismic readings down in Southern California. Yes. Whatever, dude. They expect exactly, people right? to believe this stuff, just like cyclonic thunderstorms sucking in the birds at yeah. uh, the beginning of the year, you know, where the, the animals and whatnot died in Arkansas, BB Arkansas and stuff, uh, not only the beginning of the year before, but, you know, this year as well. And I swear, man, people are just so gullible. It's like, I don't know, it, 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 it pisses me off to no end about how gullible people are anymore, and it's this damn technology. I mean, granted, technology comes in handy. We use it in a useful manner, but on the other hand, the same technology that we use in a useful manner is used to sedate, you know, the populace, and it's just ridiculous. It really is. Well, and it's on such a, a broad spectrum of things. I mean, just look at we had our primary elections here in Washington State yesterday. And um, we, you know, Joni and I have been doing the research. We've hit these candidates hard. We know who the good ones were, who the bad ones weren't, and who the lesser of evils was, which was more often the case. And people voted right down party lines. And um, it was disgusting. Well, it, even- it was well, even the party lines that they voted were the anointed, yeah, establishment candidates. So, you know, they got the message of what the party wanted, and they never even engaged their brain. And, you know, both parties are so corrupt. Right. And at this point, I don't actually believe there's going to be even be. I mean, right now it's just for show. Um, yeah. Keep people thinking things are, you know, not afoot, that everything is normal, but... Honestly, I don't think there will be elections this year. There's no other reason why the Obama administration would be pushing a a declaration of national emergency ever since the swine flu. See, that was the whole reason that 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 declaration was first instituted back in 2009, and ever since has been extended, 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 even though it wasn't but uh, uh, four or five months later the World Health Organization declared the uh, epidemic to be, you know, not a threat, everything's over, and yet here we are um, still under a, and not a lot of people know this, but the fact that we're still under a, uh, a declaration of national emergency, our country, and what that does in regards to our Bill of Rights, et cetera, and, and all these other little things that are being passed during holiday uh, or around holidays, like uh, this year, in the beginning of the year, you had the NDAA, and then, uh, uh, and there was another one on St. Patty's Day. I don't not, I think it was about the, uh, I think it was about the gun control. And then uh, uh, on July the sixth, we had a uh, executive order signed in regards to the uh, uh, continuity of government communications. And uh, it's well, just and don't ridiculous. forget S three forty seven, the trespassing bill, which it made it illegal to redress our government. Well, that's crazy. That just says that, you know, that just says that we have no freedom of speech. We have no uh, opinion. No. You know? And we're all criminals if we do. Oh, yeah. You know? So. The criminalization of freedom is what it is. Right? Yeah. I hate even talking about all this. It just makes me sick. It honestly does. And it has to be talked about. Uh, I know that. But, man, I tell you what, it just. This isn't this isn't the place I grew up in, you know. I'm 38, and uh, nothing is the same ever since the uh, ever since the Clinton administration. Is from when I remember, 
that things uh, changed and that things have been slowly he- heading downhill up until recently. Now they're just now it's free fall, you know, uh, all of it's free fall downhill. So I don't know, it's just it's ridiculous. I'll say well, that see, much. I'm I'm a lot older, and for me, you know, it became very clear with Bush Senior and his and first step to the new world order, right speech. And so I've been paying attention for a long time, knowing full well that the parties are on the same team, and the kabuki is keeping us from realizing the uh, destruction of our government, because we're all going D's versus R's, old versus young, rich versus poor, black versus white, blah, 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 instead of, wow, it's our government setting us up so we don't think. Exactly. Well, that, and they're intentionally trying to create drama so that there's a yeah. there's a reason to keep passing these stupid laws where, you know, the real reason is just buried and hidden. Yep. And, uh, I mean, of course, we all have an idea. We don't know exactly for sure, but we have an idea of what's going on. And uh, it's the people like us, they're trying to silence oh, yeah. and all of this. A real good example, you know, getting run off the road twice last year uh, in a time frame where uh, me and my friend were putting out videos about heart technology and uh, Digison receivers uh, and the New Madrid fault line. I mean, that just, that's, it's been one crazy year for me. I'll put it that way. Actually, it's been a crazy year and a half. And uh, nothing has been the same in my life ever since. And it's just ridiculous. It really is. Well, it's hard to pretend. And when you know, when you take the red pill, you can't go back and take the blue one. And when you take the red pill, it's really hard to pretend everything's okay. And so it does. It changes. It changed my life. I don't do anything but research. You know, because I want to know and I want to help other people to get a clue and wake up and prepare. Right. Well, see, that was initially my main goal in getting on YouTube back, you know, five years ago. But even then, with just simple preparation videos, I was running into uh, I was running into problems with trolls. I mean, things of that nature. And it's like, you know, what other reason does a person have to try to slam you if you're just talking about preparation? I mean, you're not talking about anything else. And then it went on into chemtrails for me. And that was a big study of mine for a few years, and it just it, it just uh, snowballed with with troll activity. And it's like, you know, we already know, and I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, I'm sure that y'all know about the uh, FOBs about uh, or FBOs. I'm sorry about the uh, software. They're, they're wanting people to design software that would allow. Yeah, uh, fifty. You know, one person to be fifty identities online at one time for disinformation purposes. Yeah, and uh, I'm telling you, scary times, scary times. Speaking of which, uh, I'd like to go ahead and get on the topic of what's what's coming down. What do y'all think about these the military evacuations? All of the uh, all of the activity that everybody's been noting as far as uh, convoys and military equipment being moved. And uh, also the fact that uh, a friend of, a friend of mine and I uh, we've uh, since verified through phoning Fort Bragg uh, went through a real a real uh, crazy experience phoning Fort Bragg about these evacuations. So well, uh, you want to go ahead and talk about what Earl found? Sure, Earl called Fort Bragg and. Uh, acted to be a soldier and started questioning uh, about the evacuations uh, with a I don't I don't know what rank she was but she was personnel at Fort Bragg and uh, she did confirm the evacuations and yet when he started to ask about the two week time uh, she then got suspicious and then he went ahead and admitted that uh, he was not a soldier that uh, there were uh, and of his in the military who were warning him about these evacuations, and at that point she uh, proceeded to tell him that she could not discuss this any further because he was not uh, authorized personnel and hung up the phone with him. Wow. So at, at that point, I went to call 
uh, to find out myself, and I talked to the same lady, and before I could even get the, the words out about an evacuation, I was then transferred to a desk sergeant, um, and the same thing, before I could get a few words out about the evacuation, he transferred me to public affairs, and public affairs then denied every bit of it, but they were quite curious about who I was, what alternative news network I was with, and where I was located, and uh, just, you know, just a bunch of crazy stuff, and what... what a lot of people aren't understanding who are close to me is uh, because I have friends who are uh, um, stationed at Fort, Fort Bragg, and I have my sister, her husband, a military police officer in Virginia. These guys have no clue that anything is going on. Uh, not sure about, uh, well, I, I do know that one friend, the one that's stationed at Fort Bragg, he's, uh, he's on medical leave. He's actually... Uh, he's special forces and his MO is actually psychological operations but he's on medical leave due to a surgery and so uh, you know who's to say that either he knows and he's not saying anything you know going back to his MO or uh, he's just really uh, he's really not in the loop about all this and what I try to explain to people about this is that you know the the ultimate plan uh, the ultimate plan of this is that only so many people are going to know and, and to be allowed to safety, you know. I mean, that's the elite agenda, 500,000 people. And uh, even though we have quite a bit more, you know, in, in regard to that number in the military, uh, that, 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 doesn't necessarily, that doesn't necessarily include them because these, these numbers, this 500,000, are the people who have the money, the people who are the elite. And they're not including our military in, in, in uh, you know, a plan for safety. So that's the only reason that, you know, that's, that's the only explanation that I have for people who question this is that, look, they're, not everybody is in a loop about what's going on. So even though they're a soldier or whatnot, it doesn't mean they know. And I've also gotten confirmation from friends who, uh, whose family, uh, which was odd to them, that uh, – <coughs> They, they, they don't hear from this family, you know, but every so often, well, uh, just two days ago, one of my friends, uh, her husband's uncle called them to let them know that they were being deployed to active duty from uh, reserve status, and they sounded very scared, and they asked them to keep an eye over their uh, wife and grandkids, and their very uh, exact words were, uh, something really effing big is going down. And then uh, a, a day later, the same phone call came from the same relative saying that they were being deployed at 12 midnight that night. And once again, they uh, pleaded that the family would keep an eye on his wife and grandkids. So, and I've heard other confirmation from other people. I have a friend whose son works in the Pentagon. He's, he's flipping out right now. He, uh, he's preparing. He's about ready to, to, to bail on the Pentagon. Um, he was talking to his mother about a plan where they – have offered their, uh, or they will offer their employees a change of clothes. Uh, they will take away their car keys, their identifications, their wallets, and they have no clue as to where they're going or what's going to happen. But they were told to expect this to happen very soon. Well, he don't want to be a part of that. He don't want to disappear. He don't want to lose his family, and he's actually considering uh, bailing on on the Pentagon. So I mean. You know, just a number of small confirmations to add up to everything that it is that we're hearing about these evacuations and whatnot uh, that lead me to believe that every bit of what I'm hearing about the reasons and, and the evacuations are true. So why not prepare for it? I mean, um, not trying to fearmonger people, not trying to scare them into doing something, uh, you know, just trying to get their eyes a little open here and, well, a lot open and to be prepared for any given situation. And when you look at all the uh, uh, events and occurrences around the, the globe, uh, whether it be political or whether it be earth changes, uh, everything is pointing to the fact that something big is coming. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it's better be, to be prepared. Um, you know, I, I comb the FBOs, and they've moved a lot of the more interesting ones with sensitive information over to locked websites where you have to have passwords to get in and you have to be an approved contractor and all this. You have to go through a DHS background check just to be able to bid on these items, right? 
um, the SBO website. I did find a few interesting things yesterday, and one of them I spoke with Joni about yesterday was um, McCord Air Force Base in Washington State moving and relocation of equipment. It was a $25.5 million contract where these people would have 42 hours to move all this stuff, and it looked it, it looked like um, the place of, to move it to was Fort Riley, Kansas. And there's been a lot of stuff moved to Kansas and Missouri. But anyways, um, on this SBO, it was the solicitation was canceled on July 26, but it is active on FedBid, which is one of their sensitive sites and uh, disclosure forms and all kinds of stuff would have to be signed. And when Joni and I were talking about this, she mentioned that the evacuation might be more equipment. And we've seen the tanks. Yeah. Uh, Joni, did you want to touch on your thoughts on that at all? Well, I, what, uh, this is more opinion than anything, you know, quite frankly. They don't care about bodies as much as they do their stuff. Exactly. And, right. right. So it makes sense that they're pulling out their equipment. And if you go into the political aspect of that, you know, they're dealing with cutting the military budget. So, of course, their equipment, you know, goes higher on the scale. But it's not about people. And I also, you know, where I'm living, I, I, I'm seeing a lot of C 130s, you know, which are transport. And that's been going on the whole summer. It's kind of died off since July 4th, but pre-July 4th, I would say April to July 4th, it, I'm, I'm talking four, five, six a day, four, five, six at night. So there is a lot of transport going on, and you know C-130s don't transport people. Right. Well, I've seen a lot of... Uh, I don't know if that's what you meant, Patty. <laughs> I've seen a lot of Apache yeah. attack helicopters flying here over Houston over the last few days. And it's kind of odd when they're flying so low, and you see uh, all all of the uh, you you see all of the uh, 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 armaments underneath their little yeah. side wings or whatever that is, and they're just fully armed, flying over Houston. And uh, you were talking about them being more interested in equipment and whatnot. Well, there's a good reason for that. That's because that equipment costs money, and before too long, money will be of no value. However, exactly. human life is expendable, and uh, to them, anyways. And yeah. so, and so, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're we're all expendable to these guys. Of course, they're going to be more concerned about their equipment more than anything else. So, you know, I, I mean, that's that's just a sad, stark reality of it all. Well, yeah, and they need their equipment because they've pinned us as enemy combatants. <laughs> right. Right, and yeah. so they're going to need their equipment for, you know, whatever they're going to put in place to protect them is the whole deal. And, again, the money isn't going to be worth anything. Uh, Bernanke started uh, quantitative easing three today. Secretly, quietly, he started devaluing the dollar again today. So that means we're all in pretty damn big trouble. Uh, and that's once again that goes back to preparations. Exactly. And it's been my goal for the last five years just to emphasize the importance of these preparations to people. And a lot of people come back to me with, well, you know, we don't have the money for preparations like you've been able to accumulate or this, that, and that. Well, honestly, there's never even been, uh, I've never even considered myself a middle class citizen. I've always been uh, a weak, weak. Uh, the person when I worked uh, didn't make a lot of money, and for what I was at, it was decent, it was survivable. I was able to pay all my bills, but at the end of the week, I was only able to stow uh, maybe a hundred dollars from my paycheck off into a savings uh, jar. Not even the bank. I don't trust banks. Yeah. Um, and yeah. you know, it doesn't take a lot of money to accumulate uh, uh, survival uh, equipment or gear. I mean, you know, flea markets, yard sales, things of that nature. Uh, Thrift shops. I mean, that's where I've gotten all my fatigues. Uh, flea markets are, are a good place to get camping supplies, things of that nature. Yeah. Uh, sure, some things were ordered new, um, you know, sleeping bags, things of that nature. Uh, my rifle, 
uh, I ordered that new, uh, things like that. But other That's than amazing that, what you can find at your little local dollar store, too, that you, exactly. that, that could come in handy. Right. Well, and don't That's ignore, you know, garage sales and Craigslist. Because, exactly. Yeah, yeah cuz I I'm, you know, I'm broke. We live paycheck to paycheck. Mm-hmm. But I'm like you, you know, we can squeak out about 100 bucks every payday and uh, point it in an appropriate direction instead of what in my world I call pissing it off, right? Yeah. You live a closer to the bone, you don't go to movies because you, you know, <laughs> there's a great deal on uh, canned food or you found a you know, a CB or whatever you're looking for. But I, I, you know, so I'm not, I have a friend that, you know, ordered $5,000 worth of dehydrated food in one bunch, right? Uh, That is not uh, my circumstance, right? uh, (laughs) No, people need to be realistic about their own situation. Like us, right on the, the West Coast here, right along the coastline, um, there's a lot of people that think that they're going to be able to sit and defend from their homes. And, you know, we don't know what scenario is going to play out. Uh, realistically, I am not planning on bunkering down here. Yeah. I realize that my best bet is going to be to get the hell off this coast and move inland somewhere. Yeah. And um, a lot of people are, when they're <clears throat> buying in bulk like that, um, they're not going to be able to travel with all that, and who knows how exactly. far their vehicle is even going to get them. If we're if we've got eight hours to get off this coast or less, um, we aren't moving. You know, what, what 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 real what, what how how do they plan on getting all that stuff into their vehicle along with the people that they care about? Exactly, it doesn't it doesn't you know it, it's not going to work out. That's what I've always said. My my biggest thing has been well. Store you up a couple of couple of thousand, if not a few thousand rounds of ammunition, and a rifle, a very good rifle, and a good cleaning and maintenance kit for it, so that you can take care of it. That's going to take up a lot less room than food will. Uh, any man who cannot survive, any person, I should say, man or woman, who just can't survive, you know, uh, out in the wilderness with a, with a rifle and ammunition, I'm sorry, you're just not going to make it. Period. And, and not many people. Um, are going to, like you said, not going to be able to tote a year or two supplies worth of food along with them. It's just unrealistic. Can't do it. Yeah. And in this yeah. type of situation, I feel like we're going to have to be on the move. Everybody that's trying to survive is going to have to be on the move. Uh, and probably because, remain on the move. Exactly. Only because the dangers gonna, are going to keep presenting themselves wherever you go. And a lot of people think, well, why can't, you know, why don't we just stand up and fight, stand up and fight? And I hear a lot of, uh, uh, what do they call those folks, uh, the, the, not liberals, but uh, uh, constitutionalist folks and stuff like that. Well, why don't we just raise up and fight? They did it back in the, you know, uh, uh, in a civil war and blah, 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 blah. Well, honestly, they didn't have the technology that they have nowadays back then. Correct. And they have ways. I mean, look, these guns that we have, they just don't matter. They don't. Uh, people need to research frequencies and and yeah. and uh, coin towers and things of that nature. I mean, these people can lay us down with a flick of a switch. It's crazy. Now look at the microwave weapon, the heater. That's a a big thing. It's mobile. They can put it on a truck. They can put it on a tower. They can take them wherever they need them. They flip the switch. It microwaves people within a certain range, so they heat up so quickly they absolutely back off. That, and, and, and it could be that, or it could be like uh, if people would research the silent sound spread spectrum. Oh, yeah. They can yeah. realize what acoustics can do to the human mind and, and to incapacitate somebody. Exactly. So it's not about the guns. You're not going to be able to do this just like talking about it. We're going to have to get out there. We're going to have to uh, establish ourselves wherever our spots are going to be We're going to have to wait it out for a little bit, and then at that point we can focus on regrouping and and getting together with people and and coming up with some type of plans at that point. That's just my opinion. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that's what we're going to have to do, but in my mind and my eyes, I think that that's going to be the only way uh, to get something done is to to manage our safety first in, in a safe location and then to regroup with people, and that's going to be a very hard thing. I mean, 
you're not going to be able to trust anybody after this trust is all is said and done. No, but preparation, like I tell a lot of people, preparation is not about simple survival. It is in the beginning. Preparation is about rebuilding. And exactly. when you re, you know, and when you sit with a bunch of people, you're going to have to develop that trust under some pretty raw circumstances and some pretty mentally challenged minds because uh, you know, most people I know don't, even, don't if they're interested at all, it's politics. Right? And they think we can fix it with an election. But this is far beyond that. So it is really difficult to get them on a quantum leap. And so even if we have a disaster, a natural disaster, 100% of the time the establishment breaks down. You know, your fire department doesn't respond, your gas department's shutting off lines, your electricity's down, there is no hospital, there is no response team. You're not going to pick up your phone and call 911. Of course you need to prepare for that scenario. But you also have to understand how long that's going to be and the possibility. I mean, Joplin, remember when Joplin was hit with those tornadoes? Mm-hmm. But it, yeah, it's still it's still barren, right? When Christ Church is still not rebuilt. You know, I mean, we have example after example after example. A natural disaster is a horrendous, and it's a long-term proposition. You have to rebuild. And that's what is very difficult to get through people's minds. It's like, well, you know, i got a flashlight and i got, you know, five jugs of water. I'm good for three days. Well, <laughs> in most instances, it's way beyond that. So we have that, to, yeah, we have to get minds to understand it's about the rebuild or the taking back of our freedom or whatever the scenario might be. It's right. a rebuild. Now, I do want to mention that on these dates when... These natural disasters, they say natural, but right. you know, to be anything, right. man-made. We've learned a lot about technology and what can be done with heart. But anyways, at any given point when a, a scenario like this occurs, I'd like to emphasize to people that you really do need to study your routes out of, out yep. of your area. A lot of people yep. are going to be thinking, well, like say, for instance, here in Houston, they already have evacuation routes set up for the hurricane season. Right. And honestly... Uh, it takes people six to ten hours just to get the hell out of Houston. The traffic is so backed up because all the people under mandatory evacuations are trying to leave via those routes. Exactly. And and what I try to tell people is you're going to have to come up with alternative routes, whether or not you save them to, uh, you know, on a certain form of media, whether it be a laptop, smartphone whatever, or just print out these routes. That would be the safest bet. Come right. up yeah. with several different routes, okay? Don't trust the main thoroughfare. That's not going to help the situation. There's going to be panicked people. There's going to be chaos when people try to head out on, the, you know, one particular main drag, and it's just not going to happen. So rather than to sit there and waste precious time uh, with something coming our way, you could be moving along rather slowly, of course, through an alternative route, but at least you're moving. Exactly. And, and you're not going to be you're not going to be stuck in a in a really bad situation uh, uh, in traffic. I mean, so keep that in mind when you're making your plans and you're making your, uh, your, your you know your getaway from from civilization, whether it be a big city or whatever. Keep in mind, come up with these alternative routes. It's going to save your butts. It's going to save your tails in the long run. I promise you. Oh, yeah. Well, well, even in smaller areas like where I am, I mean, I have to certainly expect that, you know, to, to get off of where I am, I have to take a ferry or a toll bridge, or I have to drive west and go down along the coastline <laughs> and then turn back and go east. So people are going to have to definitely start researching their back roads and, you know, print out that information, those routes, and alternative routes to those in case you hit a roadblock or anything, and And put those in your bug-out bag. Another thing good for people to do is to look up your your railroad maps for, like, uh, Union Pacific or or, uh, Santa Fe uh, Railroad companies. Look up old railroad maps because those are for sure, you know, direction finders, and normally – they run along uh, some type of water anyhow. So, uh, you know, it would be a good idea just to look up your old railroad maps and whatnot and, and just keep that in mind, you know. I mean, 
you know, you got to take every step possible to, to ensure that you're going to get where you're going. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, always been, it's always been in my head to do these things, and it doesn't hurt to share this information with people. So that's, that's another thing to keep in mind. Absolutely. Well, and, and, you know, and I take it one step further. Take those routes. <laughs> you know, grab your map, take a look, start driving around. A lot of times here we found alternative routes that we didn't, you know, they're not on maps. So we have more and more and more options, you know. Take a Sunday drive and check it out. Practice it, you know. Go looking at it. See how far it takes you. See if there's another option on the road, on your secondary road. Because, you know, at this point we need a, you know, secondary safe location and a third safe location. And, you know, at least, you know and at least three routes to get there. And don't trust your GPSs, by God. Them no, no. Down every single time and something uh, at, at such a uh, such tremendous scale were to happen, then you can better believe that those uh, satellites are going to be affected and uh, you're not going to have a trustworthy way of, of finding your way with a GPS. So exactly. you know, keep that in mind. Don't trust that, don't, don't trust that damn GPS. It ain't going to help don't you out. Don't rely on your OnStar. <laughs> right. No, no, don't do that either. And if you got an OnStar vehicle and it's a situation it. where where the government wanted to stop you from going anywhere, I can promise you that OnStar vehicle will be turned off. So, yeah. No one with an OnStar vehicle will be allowed in my camp. <laughs> exactly. And if anything, guys, if you're worried about that OnStar, it's built into your rearview mirror, all the buttons to turn it on and turn it off. I know a lot of people think they're turned off or whatever, but if you want to ensure that there's no contact with OnStar or that your movements can be tracked, just get up in the headliner above that rear view mirror, and you can unplug that damn thing pretty easily. So that's what I would do if I had, if if that was my situation. So. Well, see, you know, I I think about a lot of the scenarios, and I always think about them without electronic availability. <laughs> yeah. That's how well, willing I, I am to leave that behind. <laughs> right. Well, do you know how hard it's going to be for me to leave my cell phone behind? But again, it can be used as a tracking device. And a lot of people would like to believe that it can't be. In fact, I've had emails from people saying, they can't track that. Just like I've had people say, well, they can't track the microchips in your animals to see where they're actually at. But that's well, how wrong. Do you think they, I, how do you think they find these killers and murderers yeah, from yeah. their trips? Yeah. You know, I mean, that's a good thing. That's a, it's a good thing that they can find them like that. But then again, the same thing used against you if you're using it for something else. I mean, once you become a so-called, uh, quote, unquote, enemy of the state, then, you know, they're going to go through any means possible to track you down. Well, and here's a tip. If it's on TV, they can already do it. Exactly. Right. Their, right. their capabilities are way beyond what anybody realizes. Exactly. As much as I hate years. to admit it. At least by 10 years. You know, I was telling people, I saw videos where uh, scientific experiments are being posted where they can read your mind through your alpha waves. Right. Uh, through through e, uh, uh, EEG patterns and stuff like that. They can also transmit, like, I saw videos where a person had watched a movie and his mind, his, he had wires hooked up from his, from his cranium to a computer and they were able to put together a, uh, uh, the same thing he was watching, but not so clear. I mean, you could see colors, you could see shapes, you could see people and understand things, but it wasn't like watching the actual movie. Well, trust me, uh, if that's being put out there now, and you can imagine the government can do it very clearly. Uh, yeah. it's, all, it's all pretty scary stuff. But, you know, and once again, frequencies, man, frequencies is a big thing nowadays. And, and people really need to understand and research what they can do with these frequencies. Yeah. Crazy yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it, in uh, Psychology Today, basic magazine you can read about a year ago, they had put the results in of a test that they had held for 13 years about frequencies and mood. And this is on Psychology Today. This is not, you know, an American medical journal. It's just a basic, it's like Time magazine for psychology. 
well, 13 years, they know the exact frequencies to drive somebody into depression and the exact frequencies to push people in what they called um, ravenous behavior, right? Wow. That's, that's 10.3. So if it's in psychology today, it's perfected. And people need to uh, also research this uh, the, the smart grid that they're implementing, and uh, they need to understand why every bit of the electronics that you have uh, yeah. are, are running off of 50 or 60 uh, uh, hertz, you know. I mean, there's yeah. a reason behind that. There really oh, yeah. is. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, uh, once again, going back to the Gwen Tower uh, network that is and has been implemented over the last 20 years, and going back to the silent sound spread spectrum, yeah, yeah, uh, they've got us all. Well, most of us in a lullaby, and uh, in a state in which we'll accept any form of, of information that comes through the media. Yeah. Um, you know, so a lot of us are awake, but then uh, there's a lot more that aren't. So, oh, you know, re- a lot that research, more. do that research. But I will say. Uh, there's been a lot of news that indicates, and I'm not saying that it will or will not. Once again, I'm not trying to fearmonger people, but there are a lot of things happening here lately that indicate that events are, are uh, on the horizon uh, for less than two weeks from now. Twelve days, they say, that there's going to be a lot going on. Once again, I'm not trying to scare people. I'm not trying to fearmonger you into anything, but uh, I'm not sure what a lot of people, uh, uh, what their beliefs are on the – Planet X or Nibiru or anything like that, that, that uh, uh, you know, that I know about this stuff, been studying it for five years. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, you guys know a little bit about it. Um, however, there's just been a lot of things that we're, we're not being told and a lot of activity here lately, and it kind of makes you wonder. So once again, you know, I'm just preparing for this event uh, for the just-in-case not saying it's going to happen. I'm saying I'm ready for it. So uh, I know there's a deadline coming up, and uh, I'm ready for it. The thing with me is I hate, and you know this, but I hate looking at dates because every single time you get those people that come back at you and say, well, you said this was going to happen by then, and it didn't, you jackass. Right, right. And um, so I... The, the thing well, with the date is today. to be prepared in case something happens. And it might not happen on that date, but that doesn't mean that that is not going to happen. Exactly. And it might be five days later, and it might be five years later. And you know what? Nothing might happen for the next decade. And you know what? It's so great. But play, if I'm people are not prepared and something happens at 2 o'clock tomorrow morning, and you did not have your stuff ready to go, you are screwed. The end. Right. I mean, you know, unfortunately in today's uh, uh, time, there's a lot of disinformation running around out there, and, and it's, it's, it's designed to be that way, so that a lot of people are calling out dates and things of that nature, nothing happens, and psychologically it, it puts people in the mindset that, you know, oh, man, they said this crap last year or the year before or the year before, and nothing happened, so why prepare? And, and that's, that's the design uh, of, you know, uh, of disinformation. But honestly, you know, uh, sooner or later, this stuff is going to happen. And here anymore nowadays, it's looking more and more like something is on the brink. And I know my happy little ass is going to be, totally set up and totally ready for whatever's coming down. I'm not going to take anything for granted. Once again, I'm not trying to put a date on anything. I'm just going on my research and things that I'm looking at. But uh, things are on the brink, folks. They really are. And, uh, you know, I'd much rather know that all of my friends and family had their vehicles stocked and ready to go rather than to wait for something to happen and be like, oh, my God, well, we got to get this loaded up and get that loaded up and then, Two hours later, when the tsunami or whatever rolls in, you know, and keep in mind these National Guard troops, from what I've heard, are being prepared for a tsunami-type event on the East Coast to occur around the 16th or 17th. So I'm just saying, rather than sit there and waste two or three hours getting everything packed up and ready to go when you can have two or three hours behind you and a few hundred miles, why not just be ready? Well, Donnie, what was this 104-hour? 
Oh, I read this on Before It's News. There is a psychic or something of that nature that predicted Fukushima. And uh, they predicted it as four, uh, 104 hours prior to the event, and they say it happened. I haven't had the time today to, to research if that was real or not. But last night, the same psychic or whatever he is made the same prediction in 104 hours, which brings it to Sunday, uh, that there would be a nine-point in Japan and a nine-point in California followed by two nine-points, you know, 9.4, 9.6, uh, so three nine-points in California. And, and there was one in Australia, too. Yeah, and well, the Australians, you know, need to prepare for tsunami. That's what he predicted for Australia. So, you know, I found, you know, it very interesting, but I did not research if this guy did, you know, pre-predict Fukushima. But I also, you know, I also am seeing the earthquake activity up the West Coast, which I, I start paying attention when they start hitting four. And they've been hitting four, which is kind of similar. Well, it is similar to the buildup in Japan. And very interesting that, you know, these are just some side notes of interest, like you say, the disinformation. But Sunday is also the close to the Olympics, which is awesome. Sunday we also have an alignment, a planetary alignment, which uh, starting the 12th through the 18th, we have like 10 alignments. I believe Sunday is also a blue moon, a blue new moon. And uh, solar-wise, we have two coronal holes facing us, and today we have a brand new sunspot that will be, you know, direct. You know, right. so, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot to be said about the sun and the earth uh, coordination of action. Sure there is. And keep in mind, the Illuminati, uh, the elite, they worship the sun. Absolutely. And they they base a lot of their uh, actions and, and plans on uh, solar cycles. Exactly. And uh, I was going to add on to what you were saying. Now, I know there's a remote viewer who predicted the Japan earthquake, and uh, it's very well documented. Well, he also predicted that the, uh, coming up that there would be four back-to-back nine and above earthquakes. There will be uh, in, his, in his remote viewing sessions – he sees uh, Sydney, Australia, being hit with a 9.5, yeah. California being hit with a 9.6, and then these are followed by two 9.4s, and that all of these uh, events and tsunamis will be created in the same exact hour. And yep. if, if right. it's a big word, uh, if it's a big word, if all of this happened, and and within this time frame, our entire planet would be in trouble. I mean, imagine that, just one nine-point earthquake. From uh, Japan here uh, a couple of years ago, yeah, That's our world, our world for a good bubble. Four of them, I could imagine that. You know what I mean? Exactly. And, uh, you know, it's, it's once again, I just want to be prepared for this stuff. And this stuff isn't to be taken lightly. I mean, all people have to do is go back and look at the documentation. Where the same people who saw the events uh, prior to Japan, who called them word for word, are saying that this stuff is going to happen. Exactly. So, Right. Exactly. Yeah, it sounds, and, and, sounds like the same guy. It does right, sound like right. But, you know, in preparedness, I want to share one simple thing. I tell a lot of my folks that, do you have a fire extinguisher? How long have you had a fire extinguisher? Are you expecting a fire? And they're like, no, but we have one just in case. Well, this is the same kind of scenario. Regardless, earthquake, flood, fire, look at Colorado, great example, hurricane, tornado, those don't come with any warning. Neither does a fire, so get prepared. Neither do militarized police, apparently. Yeah, really, really. I'm talking about militarized police, and I'm sitting here looking at something that was just posted on my Facebook timeline. And uh, for anybody that's interested, y'all can find me under uh, Patriotic Underground or you know, by name on Facebook, Michael Beckham. Uh, I just had a post on my timeline uh, on Highway 82 in Wichita Falls, Texas, that a sheriff in a light armored tank with a gun turret 
was pulling people over for speeding, flashing lights and everything. I'm sitting here looking at a picture of it. Wow. You know? How crazy how crazy is this stuff going to get? I mean, it's 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 absolutely insane. And uh, something I did want to mention, we were talking about the Illuminati and how they uh, base their events on sun cycles and things like this. Uh, and, and keep in mind, everything to the Illuminati is hidden in plain sight. You know yeah. what I mean? That's their beliefs. Yeah. And uh, I remember earlier this year, I started seeing messages that were being passed on through mainstream media, like the use of the phrase, tectonic plates of uh, society. Uh, there, no, there's a seismic shift and the tectonic plates of society. I Googled that phrase when I heard it on a NPR broadcast. And when I Googled that phrase, that same exact phrase was being used in over 400 different news stories, even the Kardashian divorce. Yeah. Okay? And so that's very interesting. To me, that leads me to believe that just that phrase alone is a message to all the elites. It's being passed through the elite. There was also another phrase that was being used, and that was, the pressure is rising up everywhere. And, you know, I mean, sure, you know, that could be something that could be tossed into a news story or whatever, but when it has nothing at all to do with the story that they're talking about and it just pops out and stands out at you, it's something worth looking into. So the other day I was looking, you know, surfing the net, browsing, doing whatever like I normally do. I ran across Google, and their main their main page for, for search, the search engine, showed eight swimmers – uh, or not eight swimmers, but uh, swimmers forming an eight-point star. Right. People need to go back and look at what the eight-point star means to the Illuminati. And then yesterday, of course, we have uh, we have a fire that occurs at, of all places, the One World Trade Center. Okay. Yeah. And and it occurred. Now, the local local New York media is reporting that it happened from the 89th floor to the 91st floor. However. Every national media outlet is running with the fact that they say that it occurred on the 88th floor. Mm-hmm. And if you go and look at what the number 88 means to the Illuminati, it means uh, it's Nazi code for High Hitler. It's, it's very well documented about the number 8 and what that means to the Illuminati. Yeah. So once again, here we are running into uh, uh, so-called coincidental events that are happening when actually I'm pretty pretty damn sure that they're signaling to each other that things are fixing to, that things are fixing to happen, and uh, I encourage people to look at stuff like that when when the phrase or something pops out at you in the media and you're awake and you know what's up, you know these things they have meaning, and uh, so when this story about the World Trade one World Trade Center popped out yesterday, it kind of made my hair stand on end. But anyhow, uh, just. Crazy stuff, I'm telling you. We're dealing with a bunch of crazy stuff, you know. And as crazy as, as it all sounds, it's all true. I mean, you know, there there is a there is a bigger plan happening, and none of us are included in it. None of us are included in a plan uh, uh, for survival uh, for humanity, you know, the population as a whole. Something big is going to happen, and these these sick-minded people think that they're going to be the only ones who are going to be allowed to live and breathe and survive. Well, that's not true. We all have a, fight, a, a fighting chance, a God-given uh, chance to survive. And I'm not going to let anybody strip that from me, period. I'll do whatever it is in my power to make sure that it is that me and mine have a fighting chance of survival. Granted, that may not, may not be the case, but you know what? At least I tried. At least I freaking tried. And I hope that other people out there take that same mindset and, and, and follow the same footsteps and what we're doing, and that's just in preparation. So, yeah. Well, I I'm even sorry. know people that are not, not awake. There, they that? might. I know a lot of people that are not awake, and some right. of them are only awake finally to the political us versus them is not DNR. They're on the same team, just waking up. But in their guts, even the people that don't research, don't know anything, don't pay attention to. Uh, you know, earth changes, the weather, nothing. They know nothing. They feel it in their guts. They yep, feel it. They know something's wrong. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And that's a lot of people. That's a lot of damn people. That's the, you know, Like you said, even the people who are not awake. And, and the fast part about it is 
they don't understand why they feel that way. Exactly. And I have a feeling this is why over the last few years, the numbers of prescriptions in regards to kids for ADD and things yeah. of that nature and antidepressants and, and, and the things that go on top of antidepressants like a bull eye, stuff like that, I have a, a very good feeling that this is why they were all put out there. It's just, just, just keep people in a numb state oh, yeah. to not even think about or question these things. But the human instinct and, and, and human nature is so much stronger than anything man-made. And it's ripping through people's guts right now that something is going on. They just can't put a finger on it. Well, some of us have been able to uh, been able to manage to get around that, and we know what's happening. We're we're wide awake to it. So, if there's people out there that are listening to this, who are not awake, who think that these three people that are talking right now are absolutely crazy, then do me a favor. Why don't you try to pinpoint what's got what's got your gut twisted, and, and what's what's making you feel the way you do. And when you finally figure it out, hit me back and let me know. I mean, right. I re- well, and here here's a clue: turn off the damn TV, clear your mind. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Now, clear exactly. your mind. Don't trust, don't trust the news, man. They're going to tell you what they want to <laughs> tell you, and CNN and and uh, 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 Fox and all that stuff. I mean, even these stories like ancient alien theories and and. Uh, yeah. Uh, what was that show? Conspiracy theories. Uh, what, what, oh. Jesse Ventura and yeah. stuff like that. People oh, are thinking, and oh, yeah. and... But what they're not realizing is that these shows are are uh, supported by by uh, Ted Turner. You know, they're on his networks. Ted Turner is the biggest proponent of global warming, and yet he's allowing people to say that it's a conspiracy theory on his network. That doesn't make sense. There's a reason. Uh, these people like Alex Jones and, and uh, Jesse Ventura uh, and the other guy that does the uh, – I forget his name. Brad Meltzer, is that his name? Yeah. Are doing these shows. They're doing all these shows on this uh, on these networks. And keep in mind, Ted Turner is, uh, is thought to be one of the main people who put up the Georgia Guidestones, which talks about uh, uh, one world government and just reducing the population to only 500 – uh, Five hundred thousand. So, well, yeah, I mean, and you talked about him as a global warmest, but I want to talk about him as a eugenist. There's the fifty-two dollar word. Right, and so is Bill Gates. Exactly, Microsoft. Bill Gates. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and, well, yeah, know, exactly. Fine. Turn off the damn Turner, TV. Turner does all the media, and Bill Gates has the computers on lockdown. Mm-hmm. You know, so and our minds are subjected to all of this. Every day, every single day, every single day, yep. and it's like no wonder, no wonder we're we're running around scatterbrained right now. You exactly. Know? Uh, exactly. Well, they have the media so well rigged, and people are so gullible, as we discussed before, that they believe it. And you know, I'm sorry, sheeple, but um, you know, they they listen to the propaganda, believe it to be truth, don't look any further, and wait for the next update on what is happening. They don't see uh, why certain things are pushed, and why certain stories are held back, just like with the Colorado shooting at the same time that the U.N. Arms Trade Treaty was going on. Um, yeah. You know, they, they are completely using, and we know this, but... I, I want to make it very clear to people out there that all the mainstream media networks, ABC, NBC, uh, CBS, CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, they are all a pack of lies. Oh, yeah, it's all propaganda. Very selective, uh, full of propaganda. You cannot believe them. Turn it off. Do some exactly. research on your own. Well, yeah, and, you know, kind of a a side note again, the Aurora, Colorado uh, shooting was seven days before the Olympics, and the last shooting at the SEEK was seven days before the end of the Olympics, and the Olympics is nothing but a Hail Mary to the Illuminati. This, This year, the symbolism is, you know, drastic. Keep in mind, look at the video that Lil Wayne, one of the uh, many pop star, you know, yeah. uh, people out there who are a big influence to uh, the younger generation out here. Look at his latest video. I forget the name of it, but 
it it depicts 12 skeletons in a theater, and there is so much Illuminati symbolism in regards to goats and, and the bat, bat girl and yep. things of that nature, uh, death and, and, and uh, one eye, uh, uh, just so much Illuminati symbolism in it. This, yeah. And this video was released only a few days before the theater shooting. I mean, you know, come on, man. Exactly. It's one – they're all in cahoots. They really are. And as crazy as it sounds, that's exactly how they're keeping people under their thumbs and under wraps. So, you know, wake up, America. It, 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 you know, hell, wake up, everybody. Not just America. This is happening everywhere. This is everywhere. everywhere. Exactly. You know, wake up. Exactly. You know, before it's late, man, just – do what you got to do, and, you know, don't take my word for it. Don't take Joni's word for it. Don't take Patty's word for it. Just get out there and do your thing and do your own damn research and figure it out. I mean, Yeah, well, you on. know, first of all, you need to read. Yeah, right. please, right. for the love of God, learn how to read. Please, when we, read. You know, Joni and I are liberty movement organizers, quote, unquote. And, you know, when we have, we send this information out, we actually have groups that we send this information out to locally, and we send all of our research to these people, and they don't know how to read, they don't want to read, they're too lazy to read. What did you call them? Um, easy, easy chair patriots? Uh, lazy boy patriots. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Lazy boy patriots. What they want to do is... There are is- too many. Yeah, sit in their chair and keep the remote in their hand and get fed scoops and scoops and scoops of crap. But, you know, if you got an article right in front of them that's important, they'll go, they'll put it off because they've got to watch, you know, Dancing with the Stars or the football game or whatever, right? People will not consume information using a critical thought. They're regurgitators. Oh, you know, um, one of the news guys said this, I'm going to regurgitate. Regurgitated. It must be real. You know, I'll just tell you what he said. I won't even ask myself if that's correct, if it's right. Should I do some research? Where is the source article on this? Nothing. They're like, oh, yeah, uh, you know, Bill O'Reilly said everything's okay. Oh, oh God, did you have to say <laughs> My- his name? Speaking of regurgitating. Oh. No, what's Man. worse is when you get an email saying, well, Rush Limbaugh said. Exactly, exactly. Bye, bye, or or uh, Sean Hannity, you know. Yeah. I mean, all of these guys. Even going back, I know a lot of people who are just hell-bound, hell-bound and uh, uh, just all, you know, hey, Glenn Beck, he's for America, yeah. you know. And, you know, oh. I sat there and watched him uh, do his little fake tears for America bit and how they had to uh, put something underneath his eyes to make him tear up. And it's just – it's all one big show, people, one well, big see, this show. Is, this is how I put it, you know, because I'm like going broke trying to wake people up, right? Mm-hmm. But if you're making money on the liberty movement, you aren't a patriot. No. No, no. You're about the same thing as we got in D.C., I'm going to line my pockets, baby. I don't you know, want you to wake up because my money train will stop. And you know what's funny is they're using that money to set up for their preparations and their exit yep. plan. You know. Yep. And uh, here we are, the people that. Well, I say we. I speak for everybody in general, supporting these guys. You know, and we don't yep. have a clue. Exactly. Once again, I'm speaking in general. You know, there's some of us who have a clue. We're 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 wide awake to what's going on, but anyhow. Exactly. One thing I before I forget, and I know this is off track of what we've been talking about, but another thing to be on the lookout for, folks, is when communications drop. Yeah. When we lose the internet, you can't make a phone call. No. And if that if that were to last for more than thirty minutes to an hour, I would say, you know, well, most it. people would lose yeah, their yeah, minds. Exactly. You know, you know exactly. what we're what we're doing in our local group is if if internet connections go down um, for more than six hours, we have you know unless we hear otherwise that something bigger is happening and we just need to get the hell out of here, um, we have a local meeting place where we can get together and find out together what's happening. And then bug out together from there. 
exactly. Exactly. Yeah, we've set up, you know, the same thing here because we're spread all over. We're really spread all over. Right. You know, so, you know, it's creating a local, you know, a local meetup. You know, we got three hours local meetup even if the business is closed and we're in the parking lot. So at least like-minded people can, you know, get a plan for their area. You know, because we're spread all over. I mean, I've got a weird geographical setup for my group. So do we. We've got four counties, so we've actually got two meetup places. And someone else is handling one, and I'm at another. But, I mean, it, it doesn't matter because if somebody doesn't show up. Yeah, they know what to do. We know what to do. We have exactly. our plans in place. And you don't have to be a member of a liberty group of any kind to go do this. You can talk to your neighbors or find anyone in your area that is willing to be educated or is already educated and like-minded and find them and set up the same thing there. You can make those phone calls today. Go door knocking today. Talk exactly. to your family if nobody else. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Well, ladies, it's it's uh, good talking to you guys. If you only got nothing specific that you'd like to talk about, I know I'll talk all night long about what's going on and stuff, but if there's nothing I specific. Could, I ahead. could talk for hours about prep, um, but there was actually, um, if you've got a couple more minutes, sure. Um, the, the Anaheim stuff that's going on right now. I am... I, I, you know, I got to look in at what's going on there and the people that are freaking out. Last night, Joni and I got online, and we were looking at the earthquake map. Um, not so much today, but yesterday, those, all those quakes around your Belinda, now think about where that is, and then think about how angry people are right now. And yeah. it just... You know, I can't say for sure that it's HARP, but, um, you know, when, when the HARP activity goes up, people get either really agitated or really mellow, and I think that depends a lot on what frequency they're running. Um, but it, it, it really made me stop and wonder what all is going on there. How angry do they want these people? Well, yeah, because there's a media blackout on the riot they've been having for, what, 10 days? Uh, since uh, the 22nd, since yeah. July 22nd. Yeah, you know, and I mean a complete media blackout on the whole thing. And so uh, it's interesting that, like you say, that it seems to be pinpointed in the same location. Well, and it's all around the- North Orange County Community College. Yeah. I'm looking at the earthquake activity, man, seismic activity is like you know, it's you know, it's a lot <laughs> looking out that way. So yeah. Well look at the look at the depths that are running today too. We were talking about that earlier this morning. Um, there's a lot of hundred and sixty eight kilometers, six hundred, five hundred, four hundred. There's a lot of really deep quakes, um, over ten kilometers going on today with and yesterday was completely the opposite yesterday they were 10 kilometers about on the average out of 13 hours there were only 10 quakes that were over 10 kilometers which means an a crustal shift today it's way deep you know so the fault lines are responding yesterday i think we had crust movement Well, there's more quakes today than there were yesterday, too, yeah, I think, already. Yeah, well, bigger, bigger today. Definitely but bigger. I, I saw off the coast of Oregon up there uh, near you, Patty. Uh, hopefully you're keeping an eye. I know you are. But, uh, yeah, saw a good little bit of activity there, three of them on the coast of Oregon. And yep. uh, that's, one, that's another uh, place that they're saying will pop off here pretty soon with a good one. So, yeah. Um, hopefully I'm out of here before then. I'm sorry? I said hopefully I'm out of here before then. I hope so too. I hope everybody's got a fighting chance of just getting away and escaping yeah. any danger. But 
Unfortunately, I already know that's not going to happen, and there's never a 100% success success rate, and uh, and a lot, you know much of anything. But you know, I'm keeping my fingers crossed for all those people, and I actually hope that anybody who may be listening to this will will uh, will take steps, you know, to to ensure their you know their survival or their escape or you know <laughs> anything like that. So. You know, well, if, if they if, if if they want to question it, you know, they can think about the one of the FBOs that I found yesterday was the 355 passenger evacuation buses right. for for Virginia, and um, they were for multiple locations. And this was submitted by the State Department, and there was all kinds of special disclosure papers that had to be filled out in advance to use absolute discretion and not tell anybody who was going to be on these buses, where the buses were going to stop, where the buses were going to be heading to, and it was awarded to U.S. coachways. And there was no date of use listed, but they're getting ready for something. I mean, it very the name of the, the title of it was Evacuation Buses. Sure. That was right there in the FBO title. And keep in mind that all those offices in Virginia have been moved to uh, Denver, Colorado, where, you know, obviously there's DIA, Denver International Airport. I encourage anybody who uh, doesn't know much about that to research the DIA mural and uh, and just check out the history behind Denver International Airport. Yeah. And, well, uh, they've moved a again, lot of data. Oh, go ahead. Finish, please. <laughs> I was going to say once again, we moved uh, federal offices out that way. You got the Secret Service and uh, FBI, you know, headquarters being moved from uh, that area up to Denver. So, I mean, well, they've moved the VA headquarters. Um, they've moved NOAA, the headquarters. They've moved. Oh, I, you know, I have I have a list that I could post. But of all the headquarters um, that they have moved to Kansas City, Missouri, and of all places, right? And, right. Um, you know, that's also where their food commodity office is, and that's also where their, um, oh, I found another SBO. I'm pulling up real fast. Um, but it, it was basically on, um, they wanted over 20,000 uh, taggers for cattle, like ear taggers, with uh -huh. GPS tracking chips included with each of those taggers. And that was a $300 million, or $300,000 solicitation, sorry, not to scare anybody. Wow. But they wanted those um, for their, that's where their national veterinary stockpile is located now. So, I mean, yeah. like I said, it's all more reason for people to open up their eyes a little bit and at least, you know, question the things that are going on around you. Nobody's trying to make you believe anything. Bottom line is you have to question what's going on around you. It's, it's always it's a good habit to do that. And honestly, in doing so, you're liable to see something that might jolt you into a new awareness. And believe me, once you see one thing, the rest of it comes flooding in. So, uh, yeah, and you know, I even hope that, I hope that happens. Well, even if you know, I say awake, we use awake real easily, but every day I wake up more and more and more. It never ends. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't. Never it's, ends. it's an ongoing process. Exactly, exactly. Because you know what? Even it, people becoming politically awake. Hey, that's a coup, you guys. We should celebrate that because that's one step to breaking down. Um, them automatically uh, eating the crap they're being fed. Mm -hmm. You know, every time you take one step, it opens up a whole new door. And, you know, it, when you finally hits you, when you sit around going, holy crap, my whole life was a lie. <laughs> oh, yes. You know, you know. <laughs> at, at the different stages of waking up, because um, I was I was totally one of those couch potatoes. I mean, I was into Jerry Springer. I didn't get out of the house a lot, uh, you know, I just, I hung out with my family, and that was my life, and, you know, I I did, I ran the rodeo circuit, and 
There was nothing outside of that box for me. Yeah. I was all about living and having fun. And then I started paying attention to politics, and that opened my eyes. And I, I, I ate their, their crap yep. and their propaganda. And I went, wow, this is bad. Yeah. <laughs> and then I got thrown into this liberty movement and continued to educate myself so that I could help educate others. And as I learned, I mean, I moved past our local Republican and Democratic parties within a couple months. Yeah. And um, once I got past that, I mean, I was on the phone calling Joni constantly because she was ahead of me. And I would call her, bless her heart, <laughs> thank you. Well, thank but you. I would, <laughs> I, would, I would call her and I'd be like, oh, my God, I just woke up to this. And Joni would say, yeah, now go look this up. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I sent you that article. We should talk about that, that article um, on the government think tank, the military think tank, putting out um, scenarios. And one and one of the – this just came out Monday. One of the scenarios is, you know, the angry Tea Party mob starts a riot and how they're going to shut it down. And, it, you know, you might need to send that to you know, you might need to send that. It's very interesting. I don't know if it's fear porn, right? But it's very interesting because of the comments. It made me feel really warm inside. People are awake. It did. It made me feel good. People are awake. Because a lot of times you feel pretty damn isolated. Oh, geez. And you know? it's it's really great when you can see a lot of people getting involved. It's frustrating when you see the same, only the same people getting mm -hmm. involved. But yeah. when some new people start hopping on, even if it's only one or two or three, it it does. It makes you feel good. It does. Um, it really does. It's, the, the, the problem is it's still not enough. And the, the people, I saw a comment on one of the YouTube videos I was watching for research this morning. And um, you guys know that see something, say something, DHS crap. Right. Someone posted a comment that says, see something, share something. Awesome. And that really kind of clicked with me because there are not enough people out there that are in the know or that are getting there that are sharing what they find or that have their, you know, they may have their eyes open to what's happening but don't have their eyes opening to what's going on right around them. Right. Um, and, or and they're this, fearful. You know, or they're terrified. Yeah, yeah, and so they don't yeah. want to say anything, yeah. Oh, I, I see that all the time. Me too, me too. And it's like, no, 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 we're still the majority. And we, right now, you know, we still have free speech. We need to exercise it as much as possible. Yeah, until it's taken away. Exactly, until they don't let us at all. Exactly. And so we have and time. Point, and at that point, it's like, you know, if they're going to take it away, then I know what I'm going to do. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Me, I'm going to stand around and hold people's hands that thought that would never happen in America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I was not prepared for so much hand-holding. Well, I wasn't prepared for any of it. So you can't prepare for any of this, and then you get thrown down the rabbit hole. Yep. And um, it's it's amazing what you find. It is. It is. It is. You turn into you turn out to be a lot different person yourself than you thought you were. You find Absolutely. out who you really are. Absolutely. And it's a much better person too. It really is. It is. Absolutely. It is. Absolutely. No matter what the government says, no matter what what the lexicon report says. And that, for people that don't know, was released back in 2009. I encourage everybody to look at the, the Lexicon, L-E-X-I-C-O-N report released by the Department of Homeland Security, and look at who they are labeling as possible domestic terrorists. It, it will shock you. It yeah. really will. Yeah. Well, and yesterday they came out with, if you do not use social media, you should be questioned as an enemy combatant. Right. Yeah. You know, so no matter what, you know, they're going to come up with a reason. Sure, okay. sure. You look funny. You know. Yeah, we're like, we just don't like you. 
exactly. the only thing that they won't the only thing that they won't use is the color of your skin. Unless that's, you're white. That's where you're safe. Well, I guess that's kind of true, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, unless you're white. Yep. Yep, cuz that is, you know, that's the uh, to keep the sheeple fighting so they don't realize the big picture. Let's, you know, create race wars. And let's create income wars, and let's create gender wars, and let's create, you know, false paradigms everywhere. And that will keep your little minds occupied so you don't think. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. As well, long ladies, as we're pitted uh, against each other, we're not going to see it. Exactly. Ladies, I really hate to bounce on you guys, but I do have an agenda today. I've got a lot to do. I've been on the move since uh, having been gang stalked uh, back in May. Uh, I was actually forced to move out of North Carolina. I did document every bit of that, but it's a real crazy situation. But I've been, I've had a lot of things happen to me in the last, I don't know, since May. Um, uh, uh, a lot of things that, you know, caused me to rethink my situation with me and my little four-year-old son. And I've just got a lot of plans that I have to live up to today. But I would definitely like to do this again sometime soon. Well, and, 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 you know, just to chat even, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. because I think it's really important to keep our eye on the movements. It is very yeah. important because if we didn't keep our eye on it, then I guess we'd just be stuck in limbo trying to figure well, out what's be, going yeah, on. We'd, we'd be watching Dancing with the Stars, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate your time. I really do. Awesome. Right. Thanks, Mike. Well, Hey, not a problem. I love you ladies. I love everybody out there listening. And I want you to know that, you know, patriotic space didn't just disappear off the map. I just kind of, I had to lay low for a bit because in the, the shoes that I've been wearing for the last two years, it's been one hell of a predicament. And I'm still out there doing what I need to do. I'm just doing it, doing it on another level. So Exactly. But, uh, I love each and every one of you all. And I hope that no matter what we no matter what is presented to us in the future, that, uh, you know, everybody's going to take steps to ensure that they can make it another day. Exactly. Past what, you know, what's being put in front of us. So, But uh, I'll get with you ladies later. I really do appreciate y'all allowing me in on this conversation, and uh, I'll be in touch soon. All right. You take care, right. and God bless. Talk Thank you very later. much, ladies. Bye. All right. Are we done? I don't know, are we? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Are we, are we ever? 